green. It used to be just a color, the color of fresh grass, trees, and leaves. But during the past few years, green has become a buzzword and a symbol. That single word is now shorthand for products and technology that are advertised as environmentally friendly and sustainable. Sometimes it seems as if everything is turning green, from hybrid cars, to eco-friendly laundry detergents, to locally grown food. Hmm. Of the thousands of products we depend on every day, there's renewed interest in developing greener plastics. Worldwide, almost 200 billion pounds of plastic is manufactured every year. Within 10 years, 20% of the world's plastic could be made up of an eco-friendly alternative known as bioplastic. Many materials that we use every day are made of plastic. But what makes up plastic? Like everything else in the world, plastics are made from molecules, groups of two or more atoms bonded together. Plastics are molecular giants. They're made up of many small molecules called monomers to form long chains called polymers. Monomer means one part, and polymer means many parts. If you compare a paperclip to a monomer, then you could think of a polymer as a million paperclips hooked together. Plastic, a type of polymer, is a very long chain made by linking monomers in a process called polymerization. The type of polymerization shown here is called a condensation reaction. That's because a small molecule, water in this case, is released each time a bond is formed between two monomers. Polyethylene, a commonly used plastic found in grocery bags and packaging, is formed by adding together molecules of ethylene in another type of polymerization called an addition reaction. Addition reactions happen between molecules that have double bonds or triple bonds. In this case, ethylene contains double bonds. Today, we get the monomers that are used to make plastics from crude oil. But oil supplies are running out. Continuing to make plastics from crude oil may not last and could lead to even more environmental pollution. Those problems have sent scientists on a quest to develop a more environmentally friendly plastic known as bioplastic. Oh. You might say that bioplastic is a sweet solution. It's made from sugar that comes from corn, sugar cane, or sugar beets. These natural, renewable sources of monomers make bioplastic production more environmentally friendly than traditional plastics manufacturing. PLA, or polylactic acid, is one kind of bioplastic. A company called NatureWorks makes the largest amount of PLA in the United States. Let's find out a little bit more about the chemistry behind PLA. Lactic acid is essentially a building block for PLA. But lactic acid cannot be converted directly into PLA because the chemical reaction that links two molecules of lactic acid together also generates water. The water molecules prevent the growing lactic acid chain to stay together. So, instead of a long chain of lactic acid molecules, many small chains are formed. Scientists have found a way to use these small chains to make PLA. The small chains called polylactic acid oligomers, are combined in a chemical reaction that forms molecules called lactide. The chemical reactions also produce water, which is later eliminated. The lactide molecules act as the building blocks, or monomers, that are polymerized into PLA. NatureWorks produces small pellets of PLA, which they call INGEO, and sells them to plastic and fiber products manufacturers. Like conventional plastics, the pellets can be melted and reshaped into sheets to make bags, cups, and food containers. Mm. The pellets can also be molded into thicker items, such as plastic knives, spoons, and forks. PLA can even be stretched into fibers to knit hats, socks, carpeting, t-shirts, and even diapers. <laughs> Are plant-based plastics really a dream come true? Some ads for bioplastic make it seem so, especially when they suggest that bioplastic production generates no waste or air pollution. But let's examine the facts. Bioplastic may, for instance, be harmful to the environment. Growing corn 
and other crops involves the use of pesticides, herbicides, and fertilizers, which can contribute to water pollution. Motor vehicles needed for planting, cultivating, harvesting, and shipping crops use gasoline made from crude oil and release carbon dioxide, a gas that traps heat and causes climate change. And don't be too quick to believe another claim, that making bioplastic doesn't require the use of fossil fuels, including oil, natural gas, and coal. Although you don't need fossil fuels as raw material to make bioplastic, factories that manufacture bioplastic use electricity, usually generated with fossil fuels. In fact, producing bioplastic often requires nearly as much energy as producing conventional plastics. Another concern is the risk of using too much farmland or crops to make bioplastic instead of feeding people. It's not yet clear how big the risk is, but some experts claim that diverting farmland and crops for purposes other than food could lead to a food crisis. Clearing land, especially the jungles in South America, to grow crops for non-food uses may also cause long-term damage environment. Some bioplastic, including PLA, can be disposed of by composting. Like leaves and garden waste in a backyard compost pile, these plastics break down into an organic material that can be used to enrich the soil. That process, however, may not be an ideal waste disposal solution. Composting releases carbon dioxide, a gas that causes climate change. Unfortunately, most communities don't have composting facilities. So, most compostable bioplastic ends up in municipal landfills instead of being composted. And like other plastics, bioplastic can remain intact for years when buried in a landfill. Scientists worry that in a landfill, bioplastic will slowly decompose, giving off methane, a gas that traps heat and contributes to climate change. For example, PLA would be decomposed by microorganisms, which would produce methane and carbon dioxide. So why not recycle bioplastic with other plastics? That's not as easy as it sounds. When different types of plastics are melted together, they tend to form a mixture that's brittle, leading to less durable plastic products. Also, various plastic types have different melting points, so recycling a mixture of plastic types is not possible. PLA is a giant step forward in society's quest for greener and more sustainable plastics. But it's only the first step. Chemists are already busy developing the next generation of bioplastic. They may have the strength and durability of conventional plastics, while being more environmentally friendly. And maybe the bioplastic of the future will be produced in factories powered by wind, the sun, biofuels, and other renewable energy sources further shrinking their impact on the environment.